Before we continue, let's talk a little bit more about BIM. What does BIM mean? Well, firstly, BIM stands for Building Information Modeling. But what does it actually mean? I like to think about BIM as a process. It's a process that allows you to design, develop, analyze, and communicate the design of a building. And the process is underpinned by technology and integrated teams. According to the US National Building Information Model Standard Project Committee, building information modeling is a digital representation of physical and functional characteristics of a facility. A building information model is a shared knowledge resource for information about a facility forming a reliable basis for decisions during its life cycle, which is defined as existing from earliest conception to demolition of the building. So how does this affect our work? If we choose to adopt a BIM workflow for our project, it will affect the way that we do things. BIM involves the creation of a shared digital model for your building project. This model will contain not only geometric information about your building structure, such as plans, sections and details, but also other building data associated with the building elements, such as schedules, text and other design information. So what is Revit? Firstly, Revit is not BIM. Revit is a design tool, just like your current CAD software. And it's a design tool in exactly the same way that a pencil, paper and ruler are design tools. But Revit does enable you to create building information models. We can use Revit to create the geometric representation of our building. We can use Revit to create two-dimensional plans and sections. We can add detail and annotation to our plans and sections. And we can print these out as sheets with our standard title block and they will look very similar to the drawings that you've been creating up until now. But we can also use Revit to add extra information to our models. We can add design data that isn't geometric and won't necessarily be represented with lines and hatching on our plans and sections. We can create graphical column schedules and data schedules of all of the structural framing elements in our project. We can use design options to show different possibilities in our designs and we can print off sheets showing each option without having to create separate files and duplicating work. We can add information to our building elements through use of keynotes and element parameters, which allow us to streamline how we work and make documentation more efficient. One of the advantages of working in Revit is that you will model everything in three dimensions. When you draw a wall in plan, it will automatically be present in any section which cuts through it. If your wall gets moved during the design process, you don't need to update it in every view that references it. You will only have to do this once and it will update in all of the other views. You can share your model with other design consultants that are working on the project and they can share their Revit models with you. This will allow you to reference their data into your project. You could use it as a background. You could use it as an underlay to help you lay out structural information. You could choose to incorporate some of their elements into your project, such as levels or grids. And then you could choose how to handle any changes in their data and whether to incorporate them automatically into your model or reject them with comments. So Revit is not BIM, but it is a very useful tool which does allow you to create building information models. And in this course, I'm going to show you how.